Well, hello and good afternoon and welcome to Yarn Lane. This is only our fourth show and it's the first time I've been with you. My name's Debbie and it's the first time Wendy's been with you as well. Wendy's going to be demonstrating what to do with it. Jo, I wasn't expecting, I knew it was going to be some kind of yarn, to find this when I came into work this morning. <laughs> this, it's massive. Um, it's called I Want to Make a Blankie. So do you know what we're going to do? Um, we've got three choices. You don't have to make a blankie. You can make a cat if you wanted to. Um, <laughs> and it's so soft, honestly, if you are making blankies. These are going to be so cuddly. Um, we've got three colour choices for you as well. There's loads on there. So this is the, the white. Um, oh, you know how that feels. When you feel the, the, the softest of teddy bears, this is exactly what it feels like. They're so tactile, it's so soft. Um, so that's the white. I love the grey. And I think, whoa! <laughs> I think I think it's Wendy's favourite as well with the grey. I, th I just think that's a very, it's a sophisticated colour. I think, um, and of course it's um, it's quite neutral. Um, and then um, and we've got the pink, which is like a space dyed pink. So there's lots of coloured different pinks in there as well. Um, <laughs> Um, these are going to be great to play with, but even if you don't knit or crochet, they're just very bouncy, and very soft and, and, and very, very tactile. Um, if you'd like to order, number on your screen or you can go to our website. And if you, oh, same PMP if you've already ordered from Sewing Street this morning, by the way. So we're carrying on that um, one postage all the way through till midnight, even though we're a different channel. And if you want to come through and say hi, you can go to the, oh, you can, you can email us, studio at yarnlane.com. Um, oh, we've got a Facebook page. We've got 20 of you on there live already. So come and join Catherine and Diana, Susan and Kate, Teresa, Marianne, Alison, Wendy, Rita, Joanne, or 20 of you. Oh, Angie says, good afternoon. Afternoon, Angie, what's it like in Great Yarmouth today? Um, so yeah, come and, come and be part of the show. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you'd like. What do you think about Yarn Lane? How, how do you think we could improve it? Is there anything specific that you've seen maybe that you can't get hold of? Um, we have a fans page as well, just like Sewing Street. So fans page on Facebook too, so you can be part of the community. Um, so that's um, Sewing Street Yardster. No, it's not at all. It's Yarn. This is going to happen all day, isn't it? It's Yarn Lane TV, um, or we've got Yarn Lane fans on Facebook. So we're going to have the same kind of community that we do on Sewing Street, but for those of you who like to knit and like to crochet, do you do both? Are you, are you sewing and knitting like, like Wendy is? <laughs> what are you got sticking out in the middle of that? <laughs> Do you know, I was just saying, Wendy, I, I wasn't expecting to see huge, big, one. It's a big one. balls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Can you imagine what I was like when the postman arrived? Oh, yeah, that wouldn't go through a letterbox, would it? Well, now it's like, it oh, <laughs> my goodness. I expected them to be little balls. Yeah. They're huge. They're absolutely ginormous. And I sh sophistication. <laughs> I, like the, I do love the grey one, but the white one is so so soft yeah the white one is really really super soft so what's it made is it going to be washable and everything is it always oh, polyester so yeah it's not going to not going to go gray not going to shrink i would pop it in a bag if i if you're doing it make yourself a big bag just because you don't want it to be thrashing around okay. i don't I, I didn't read the washing instructions i don't know if it says hand wash but i think you'd really struggle actually wringing it out 30 degrees yeah i would um, because you would probably struggle wringing that out because yes, it's, true. it's yeah. quite a fat one as well. But how gorgeous are they? Oh, I love the grey and This white. one is beautiful. Oh, I didn't see that earlier. It's beautiful, isn't it? And then all you're doing is just alternating the rows in that one. Oh, I love your tassels as well. I, di I didn't, I can't lay claim to this one. I made these two, but I didn't make this one. Um, this one, whoa, this one is done in, he <laughs> lost it then. This, this one is done in rows. And this one is done that you start in one corner and then you get bigger and then oh, you go back in again. Really? It doesn't look it, does it? No. It doesn't look it. So I'm going to throw it out there. I'm just going to throw it out there. I think someone who's quite new to crochet could actually do this. Okay. And there's a couple of reasons why. Would you like me to get started? Yeah. Now, the first yeah. thing I want to tell you is if you go on the Lion Brand website, I'm just trying to think of, I think it's lionbrand.com 
www.ghostbusiness.com. There's free patterns on there. So, so oh, okay. this is actually on, you'll see that they've got a huge band on there. If you turn, undo the band and turn it the other way, then it's got the pattern on the inside. Oh. It's got the knit and the crochet pattern. But I've just gone onto the website and downloaded them because I know if they're like me, a lot of people actually like to have them in a folder. Oh, lovely. Uh, lovely. Yes, it's on right. the back of there. Yeah, there you go. Uh, but I have downloaded them so that I can put them into a folder. And if you type in, so you go on their website and then you type in um, the one. I didn't know whether to say wool or yarn then. Now you can actually, <laughs> wool, and, wool and yarn are the same thing. They're, they're years ago we used to call it wool, yeah. now it tends to get called yarn, but they're exactly it's the, the same, same thing. It's the same as sewing, isn't it? It, it is. We, we used to refer to the thread as cotton. And now you use cotton, but it, it's, it's exactly it's the same thing, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, if, you, if you go down to the I want, I want to make a blankie box, I think there's about eight free patterns that you can download. Oh, really? And so you've got the cat and you've got the blankets and I think you've got a little baby blanket. Initially, it looks like you have to pay for it because there's a price there, but that's if you want to, I think that's for something else. But if you go underneath it, it says free pattern. So that's all I've done with these. Okay. But it is on the back of there if you didn't want to, if you've thrown it away and think, oh, goodness. Um, and I just want to show you a little bit. On the pattern, it says to use a 10 mil hook for the crochet. Um, and on the back of there, it says to use a nine mil. Now we've gone with the 10 mil because it just gives you a little bit more fluidity. Okay. So the bigger the hook, the more fluid it's going to be. And what I've actually done on here, if we, uh, shall we start with the crochet or knitting? It's up to you, you choose. I'm going to crochet. Perfect, that was the right choice, <laughs> Debbie. <laughs> so I'm, ju I'm just going to show you. So these three swatches are exactly the same. So they've got the same amount of stitches in and the same, oh, oh I nearly got that. Oh, I nearly did it, Elliot, didn't I? Nearly. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> there we go. So they've all got the same in them. They've got the same amount of stitches and the same amount of rows. The difference is the size of the hook. Oh, okay. So this one was a seven mil. Now this one, I think, did I do it in the 10 or the nine? Probably, I think it was the nine. So that was the nine. And this, I absolutely adore this. Now I'm going to make this myself. This was 20 millimetres. This was a big, oh. <laughs> big a huge, huge hook. And that just crocheted up so quick. So, so quick. Um, but obviously, if you're going to use your own hook, then uh, just be aware that the amount of rows are not going to be what it says on the pattern. Okay. Best way to do that, um, a top tip, is if you do want to use your own hook, and I absolutely adore this, I just think it's so gorgeous, is to split your ball in two. So that once you've got to the end of one side, then you know you can't increase anymore because you wouldn't have enough to go back down again. That's a good so idea. That's, that's one way if you do want to use your own hook. But for someone that's just starting out in crochet, just use the size that it says, use a 10 mil. Okay. Right, the first thing we're going to do is actually get the hook. Oh, I stuck it in the end here. That's what you were laughing at, wasn't it? Because it's, it was big enough. It looks like a doll's leg sticking up there. I thought you were gonna pull Barbie out Doop. of there or <laughs> <laughs> um, And the, this is the hook. These hooks are brilliant because um, there's a little bit of resistance when you use wooden ones. Now, I'm just going to show you this, Debbie. This isn't even half of my hooks. Oh, you're just showing off now. But this, as a, as a crochet, behave. As a crocheter, you have your favourites. So I use most of these hooks. Um, I'm a bit of a sucker. I've got a, a, a lovely friend who, who makes these hooks. And I just say, I want this, and then she designs it. <laughs> um, but if you're starting out, it's better just to use one that hasn't got any fancy bits on it, or you could use one with a, a rubber end, or you could use a plastic one. You tend to find that the bigger the hook, they tend to then turn into plastic. Oh, um, okay. It's just what you do, because obviously you've got the weight. But if you've got a wooden one, you're going to have a little bit more resistance there, so the yarn is going to behave a little bit better. Okay. And we've got hooks on the website. so have You have. I've had a look, and you have. Yeah. Uh, the first thing we're going to do and I'm going to try and show you the instructions as well. Please, please, if you are new to crochet, do not be scared by the instructions. It looks more complicated than it actually is. All you're doing is simply doing an increase stitch at the beginning of each row. Right. And um, so I will show you how to, um, I think you do it for the beginning and the end with this one, but I will show you what we do. So first thing you're going to do 
and it's quite chunky. I'm, um, I've, I've made no secret, I'm a lefty. Um, and they were going to go, yes, I don't crochet left-handed. <laughs> when I learnt 30-odd mm, years ago, it was a big no-no to be a left-hander in the crochet world, so I taught myself right-handed. So you may see me just like transferring my yarn, and it's purely because my left hand is still my dominant hand. So all we're going to do, the first thing, is to create um, a slip knot. And all that means is then you can have a big uh, loop and turn it into a little loop. So this end here is your tail and the bit that's joined to the ball of wool is called your working yarn. Now I do it, the lady that was on yesterday does it, I do it a different way to her, but there is absolutely no right or wrong way in crochet, it's your way. So whatever feels good for you, um, and a lot of people hold it certain ways, it's not right or wrong if it feels comfortable. So you take your tail and you lay it over your working yarn. So I've put it over my three fingers and then all I'm going to do is reach through that little hole that I've just made and pull the working yarn through. Now that's created a big loop. Now if I put my hook through that loop, I can then pull that to what size I want to pull it to. And this is fantastic for um, people that are just starting out because you'll see in a moment, normally you do all this with your hand to get all your tension. Because we're working with such like, it's like a little sausage, isn't it? Yeah. Then mm -hmm. it's okay just to grab it. You don't need to get that tension going because you just do one stitch at a time. And the first thing I would always say to people is just get used to doing chains. So what you would, to do a chain, we've got our hook, we've got our loop on the hook, and you'll see in a lot of crochet um, instructions something called YO, which simply means yarn over. And it is what it is, you just put your yarn over your hook. So I've just put the yarn over my hook. And that's called yarn over, and that'll be YO on the instructions. And then you take the hook that was all the loop that was already on there and just pull it over. And that is a chain stitch. That's it. Right. Now I'm a stickler for not wanting to waste things. And yes, you can do a thousand chains and unpick it all. But um, on my blog, uh, you can make Christmas trees with them. So you oh get a really? cone and you do loads and loads and loads of chains and then you just wrap it around the cone and it looks really, really pretty. It looks like you've done something really intricate. And that's great for children because we all like to make something. And the way that we make children grow is by to, to show them praise and to show them they are doing it right. And by doing that, so that's a really good idea. But yes, you can just do like a thousand chains, then unpick it and start again. And I have unpicked this and it unpicks fine. So all we're going to do now, I'm going to take you through the instructions and it's just explaining a little bit about the stitches. And it's telling us for the blankie we need to chain two. So I'm going to start again and I'm just going to show you that slip knot. So we put our tail over our working yarn and we create a loop. We re reach through, pull that working yarn and we've got a loop. And that's where you see, because I'm a lefty, I, I actually transfer it. Just pull it tight. Don't pull it too tight. We don't want it to be too tight. Now we don't actually work into this loop, so we, now it tells us to chain two. So we put our yarn over the hook, and you can see I'm not doing anything with my tension here because it is quite, quite large, what I'm working with, and then I'm just going to pull that loop over. And that's my first chain, so I've created one chain. Now it's telling me to do two of those, so all I do is yarn over, yarn over, so you actually want the working yarn, yarn over and pull that first one back off. So I've now created two chains. Now you the chains are depicted by Vs, uh, sorry the stitches are de depicted by Vs but for the chains we have simply got loops. This one here was our slip knot, we don't want to work into that one. So we've got one chain there and one chain there. Now it's telling us to work three single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So this is our hook with our loop, and then we've got the first one and the second one. So we're actually going to be working in this chain here. Now I will have to tell you this is written in US terms. Oh. I don't know, because you don't crochet, there, there are UK and US terms. Okay. And they're exactly the same stitch, it's just that in the US they call it a single crochet, and in UK we call it a double crochet. So I'm now actually going to refer to it as a double crochet, but in the instructions it says single crochet. So I'm just going to show you how to do that. So in that second chain, so we don't, we don't ever work on the one that's on the hook, because obviously if we do that it's going to slip undone. 
So that's the first chain, that's the second. So we're going to work, and it tells us here, work three single crochets, which we're going to do double, into the second chain from the hook. So all you need to do to do a double crochet is you insert your hook into that space, yarn over, pull the first loop off, and you'll have two loops left on your hook, yarn over, and pull those two off. And that is a double crochet. All right. That is it. I've lost you, haven't I, Debbie? Yeah. I've completely lost you. I thought I had. That's okay. Now, <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a stitch marker in that first stitch because I want to know where the first stitch of my next, where the end stitch of my next row is going to be. So I've already been in there once. So all I simply do is do three into that same stitch. I've done one. So I'm going to do two more. So I insert the hook. I'm just going to move that out of the way for the moment so you can see. Right, so you just in. Move so to the right a little bit. To the left, to the left. Brilliant. That's it. So I insert the hook into that space, the same space I've just been in, and then I grab that yarn over and pull it through. So I'm going to have two loops on the hook, yarn over, and I pull both of those off. Now that's my second double crochet into that stitch. So I'm going to do one more, and as you can see at the moment, because the yarn is so so thick, I'm not having to do any tension. I'm literally just catching the wool between and holding it firm between my two fingers. So that's why it's so good for if someone's got the confidence to want to have to try something, um, then that would be suitable. And we go back in the same hole, yarn over and pull through. So we've got two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull both loops off. Now that is our first row complete. Okay. That is it. And then what I would do is I would put another stitch marker in the end if you're starting out. Um, when you get more confident, I'm going to put the paper back under because it's um, making a bit of a noise. Um, when you get more confident, then you'll know where the beginning and the end of your rows are. Now what we're going to do, and this is exactly the same, we're just going to work do in rows. Do the right a little bit please. Sorry Wendy. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> was a song about that wasn't to the left, to the left. <gasps> but we're going to the right aren't we um, so you're just working increasing each time and then your work gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger so we're now going to do the next row so we're going to go back that way now you need to do a, a turning chain which whenever you work in rows you always do a turning chain and depending what stitch you're using is how many you do so we're doing the US single crochet, which is a UK double crochet, which is one of the smallest stitches. We only need to do one turning chain. So I do a one chain as we did before, yarn over and pull it through. Now you can see that I am twisting the hook just to catch that loop. You'll find it very easy with the larger hook. The larger you've got, then you will, when you work really, really small, it's quite hard. And then we turn and now we're going to go back the other way. Now you can see where my last stitch was and that's where I want to work into. We don't work into that turning chain because if you do it's just going to come undone. So it's a good idea to mark that first stitch. So we're going to do a double crochet in there. So insert into that stitch and I'll just show you here you can see the V at the top and then the stitch is the hole underneath. So insert, yarn over, pull through. Are you keeping up Debbie? Are you sweet? Yeah, try in. <laughs> yarn over and pull through two. We've had questions asking if you would recommend doing a tension square before you actually start. Not for a blankie. Right. Um, you can. If you want it to come out exactly the same size as it says on the band, but I think it does state on the band um, that tension doesn't matter. Okay. But again, what I would be more inclined to do was actually change my hook till I found the consistent that I like because as, as you've seen by the tension squares the smaller the hook the tighter it's going to be now I like a really fluid blanket so I would naturally go up um, a hook size but if you want to stick to the ball and the band then yes you can do a tension and that's all you simply do is you just do so many rows and so many um, so many stitches and so many rows and then measure to see how big it is okay. but it does explain it all um, I think it explains it on on there but if not you know just send me a question and ask and I'll be able to help you um, Anne's also asked how do you split the the ball of yarn in half <laughs> 
That's a very good question because it is quite big. Yeah. Now, I did roll it, but I did have two massive and it did hurt my hands. It is doable, yeah. but or you could, <laughs> you could start and then as you've got a certain way, just weigh it and then weigh oh, the ball. Oh, that's a good idea. And then keep yeah. going and weigh it and then weigh the ball. And I would always, if you are going to go down that route, always make sure that your ball that you're left with weighs more than the yarn that you've used. Because if not, you'll get to the end playing yarn. And yarn chicken simply means that you, you <laughs> don't have any left. If, if you've won at yarn chicken, it means you've got that much left. Um, so I would always make sure that the ball that's static is a little bit heavier than the one that you've already. Does that make sense? Yeah, I would have thought of weighing them. In no way then. <laughs> no, I'd, I'd be trying to find both ends and then just matching them together. And I didn't show you, but to start, you literally just sort of like dig around in the middle and pull the end out. But I have used this one because I've, I've been using it. Um, and I, I will just say that both blankets that I made didn't use the whole wool. So if you're not going to make anything else with it, then it is a good, that is something good to do because if you, you'll be able to use all the wool up then. Yeah. But it, it did, I was managed to do all these swatches with it. So, um, right, and this is the only um, thing now that is really important with this one is because we're now going to do our increase and this is how it starts and, and goes Ooh. outwards. So we've done our double crochet in our first stitch and you'll see here, it says single crochet, which we're doing um, the UK double crochet into the first stitch, chain one. So I'm just going to do a chain one. So yarn over and pull through and that's my chain one. And what that does is creates a space when we do it the next um, row. So that's how it goes out. Okay. Once we've done that, then it says, and as I say, it looks like it's an awful lot, but when you break it down, it really isn't. So we've done our chain one turn, we've done our double crochet in the first stitch, and we've done our chain one. It's now saying to do single crochet, double crochet into the next. So we can take that stitch marker out now. So a double crochet into the next. And remember, the stitches can be located underneath the V. So I'm going to insert the hook, yarn over and pull through, and I have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both of them. And then it's saying chain one and then single crochet into the last. So I'm going to do chain one. And again, what that's doing, that's creating a space for our increase on the next row. And now I'm going to double crochet into that last stitch that we have got marked. And that's why when you're new to crochet, it's a good idea to mark the ends of your rows. So we're just going to do our final double crochet, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. And that's created our second row. I'll do, if it's okay, if we've got enough time, oh, it's going quick this morning. If we've got enough time, I just want to do the third one because that really sets it up for, and this is what you do for the rest of them. So we're working in US single UK double crochets so we're just going to do one turning chain and again that's simply giving you the height so that it's the same height as your stitches as you start the row and then we're going to do a double crochet into that first we've got our first stitch there remember not the one that is next to that's our turning chain we don't want to go in there so we insert the hook yarn over pull through two loops on the hook yarn over pull through we finished our double crochet. Now, I'm not sure if it does pick this up on here. This one here is bigger than the rest because that's where our one chain was. That's when we created that one chain. So we need to go into that one now. First though, we want to create the one chain for the next row. So we do a one chain and then we do a double crochet into there. So insert hook yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. And as I say, you can see that I'm not putting any tension in that left hand. When you do a much thinner yarn, you do need to get that tension right. And then we're just watching, it says, uh, so we, we've done our chain one, we've double crocheted into the first, then chain one, then we now double crochet into the next chain space, and then it says single double crochet into the next. So we're going to do it in there, insert, yarn over, pull through, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through 
And now we've come to that chain space. Now, when you come to the chain space, immediately after that, you're going to do your chain one and then go into the last stitch. And that's going to be the same on every single row that you do. So we insert into that space, pull through yarn over and through two. We're now going to do chain one. And then we're going to insert into that last to do our double crochet. So insert hook, yarn over, pull through. Two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through. And that's our next row complete. And then what you do, you keep going exactly in that way and it grows outward. So that's the start. And then each time, so all this pattern simply means is you do a double crochet into the first stitch. Remember, don't go into your chain, your turning chain, go into your first. Then you do a chain one which creates um, a new space for the next row. And then you do double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, all the way along until you get to that chain space. You do a double crochet in there, then a chain, and then a double crochet in the last stitch. And that's exactly the same. When someone starts doing it, um, that's all that is, Debbie. It, it sounds really complicated, but it really isn't. And, that, and that's all you do. Now, when you've done that, and you've got the amount of stitches that it tells you to do, you do the opposite. So you've gone out like that, so now you want to come back in like that. And that's what gives it its square shape. And this is amazing, because I didn't want to show this one, because it's quite hard to see the stitches on, on the screen, but that was so easy. And you can hide little mistakes in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> so we've done our increase section, and it simply tells you on here that you keep repeating that row that I've just done until you have 73 single crochet, which is UK double crochet, and two of the two chain spaces in the last row. So then we can start with our decrease section. So as always, when you get to any of the end of the rows, you must do your turning chain. So I just left a long loop so that I would be able to pick it up and do it again. Jeannie says the yarn looks so soft. It's amazing. She thinks you should teach me how to crochet. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> can you teach me how to crochet a few more days in the week? <laughs> <laughs> no, lots of time. I want <laughs> lots of time. Um, Wendy says, brilliant demo, Wendy. She learnt to oh. knit age six, crochet age seven, oh. and sewing oh. age eight. Um, I was five when I started to knit, and um, my mum was like a champion knitter. She won prizes for her knitting, and she was very upset when I didn't take it up as a real hobby. But oh. I, I then took it up when I was a bit older. Um, but crochet's always fascinated me because you have just a hook and a ball of wool and you can just make these most incredible. Um, I design corner to corner charts. Um, this is corner to corner, so you start in a corner, you grow bigger and then you get smaller. But I design the charts that um, have pictures on them. Oh. So, and that's a completely different stitch to this one. You wouldn't do that normally in double crochet. Um, but that's how I started. And then all we're going to do now is we've got it how big we want it. You have to use your imagination, Debbie. It's, it's a huge square. <laughs> and so now we want to... You're just very big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the only time in my life that I'm bigger than something and I can reach something. So now what we're going to do is do our decrease section. And it's saying the next row, chain one. Well, as I've mentioned numerous times, I'm like a... It's a broken record. I called it a crack record last week, Debbie. It's a broken record, isn't it? is you do your chain one for your turning that was stitch. cracked. It is, it is a crack record. Yeah, it doesn't sound like cracked when you say it quickly. It sounds like a rude word. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's laughing at. Um, so we do our turning chain, and this time we now want to decrease. So we want to single crochet, remember we're calling it double because we're working in UK terms, two together. Now that's really, really super easy because all you want to do is you want to insert your hook and yarn over and pull through. But this time we don't want to fasten that off. We just want to leave those two stitches on the hook. And it says that you need to single crochet two tog, which is single crochet two together, working over your first stitch and the chain one space. So we know our chain one space is in there because it's the big fat one, Debbie. 
So we haven't signed, we haven't um, taken this over the hook yet. So we're going to insert the hook, yarn over and pull through. So now we have three loops on our hook and that's purely because we've picked up two stitches. So yarn over and we pull them off. That's it, that's it, Okay. that's it. Um, but then what it does tell you to do is to chain one because you're kind of increasing again. But over the next two stitches, you want to do a decrease stitch. So we're going to do two together. So we insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. But we don't want to take it off yet. We go into the next one, yarn over, pull through. Three loops on the hook and take them over. Now I'm not sure if you can see, Debbie, if I can show it on this. What that does, it, it gives a holy pattern round the edge. Right. So because you're kind of increasing you're, so you're decreasing to make it go in yeah. then you're increasing but then you're decreasing again and that gives you a nice holy shape around the edge so that's what that is I should have done it in the pale colour shouldn't I Be the, the, the uh, single colour because you're probably being able to see it and then you just simply double crochet all the way until you get to, to the left a bit Wendy I'm off that way now <laughs> am I <laughs> It's just too excited. You can, you can tell I love it, don't you? I absolutely, again, I would just craft all day long. I would definitely give sleep up for it, Debbie. I know you wouldn't. You'd be in bed snoring, wouldn't you? You would. I'm all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I'm just going to, I just want to show you how to do the other end. So the stitches are Vs. So you want to count to the last four stitches. So that's one, one V, two, three, 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 three. <laughs> Shouldn't have had that gin. I haven't had breakfast. I still <laughs> don't, I don't know what I was, you know what I'm like. I get, I go, I go off on a tangent. Three, one V, two V, three, three, three. The fourth it's been nice working with you. It has, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. I think Neil has left the building. I think I'm okay. <laughs> so now we want to do exactly the same as we did here on the other end. So we want to do decrease. So insert yarn over, pull through. Insert yarn over, pull through. And then all three. So that's our decrease. But then we want to do, remember, we're going to increase before we decrease again. So we do our chain one. And then we're just going to increase over those last two stitches and that's it that that is the pattern that is it Debbie okay that's all you do all all the way along I'm quite glad that knitting doesn't have V's Debbie <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you do that is it and then you just keep repeating and repeating until it goes back into a square so do you are you quite quick when you crochet normally okay. Can you do it without looking? Yes. Uh, it depends what stitch it is. But yes, if I'm doing trebles, which are a little bit easier to locate the big hole, then yes, I do. If I'm doing something like amigurumi, then I have to concentrate really hard, which is, as you know, it's, uh, do you know what amigurumi is? It's um, like creating 3D shapes. And that's what, that's what the little man's made out of. He's, a, he's an amigurumi. Is he? He is. It's working in the round, so you never stop. That's a bit like me, Debbie, isn't it? I'm always going <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I do need no, to go I'd, and lay I'd down in a dark I'd say that was your new nickname if I could pronounce it. Ara Amagum Amagumi. Sorry? Ar Amagurumi. 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 Andy yeah. Amagurumi. <laughs> yes, so, so um, that's all he's worked in the round. And okay. again, I, I think, I can't, I can't be certain, I think he's a freebie. I think. Oh. But don't quote me on that. Because <laughs> um, I was just, it's all about the blankets for me because it, it really is getting to be cold in the night now and I, I can't wait to get home and make this one to have a snuggle. So, so that's the crochet version. Okay. Would you like me to show you the knitting version? No. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I did kind of ask for that, didn't I? I did kind of ask for that. And I don't know, there are an awful lot of ladies and gentlemen out there that do both. Yeah. They do, they do do both. Um, if I'm honest, I, out of the two, I would say the crochet was the harder for me to learn, purely because um, I was a lefty learning right-handed. I don't know if I'd have been a lefty learning left, whether it had made it any easier. But I promise you, those of you out there, and I can't do it, I just cannot do it. I was mentoring a lady in um, America who just said, I'm going to give up. 
She said, I've already had two mentors and I can't do it. And I just said, please, please, you will get that light bulb moment. Now she's doing amazing work. So please really? don't give up. Just, just I, keep I've on. got as far as, oh, I don't know, that much. And it's, if I get confused with it, then I just think, no, I'm not a crochet. I, can't, I, th I, can't I think that's the thing. And the great thing about crochet is that you can just rip it out. Because you'll often hear people saying, oh, I've got to frog it which just means rip, 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 so you're just ripping it out. Right. Um, but with knitting, it's a little bit harder to undo it if you do go wrong. So I was forever when I was learning, going, ah, because <laughs> there'd be a, st and she would just like pick it in. It's like, whoa. Um, but crochet hooks are very handy for picking up drop stitches as well on oh. knitting. So I don't know, would you like me to start right from the beginning? Because I've already got it, I've, I got a bit carried away, sorry, in the room, because no, I just okay. fancied doing a bit of knitting. Um, but did you want me to cast on and start from the so beginning. Have we, got, have we got time to do a cast on? Yeah, we've got 20 minutes. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> <laughs> have you got some more needles so you don't have to undo that? Well, I was just going to take them out. i tell you what I'm going to... No. I haven't. Yeah. I'm going to take them out. Oh. Look, it's... Oh, no, I feel bad now. I. You should, Debbie. <laughs> I'm going to pick them up in a minute. I'm going to pick... It's too late. It's too late. I've done it now, Debbie. You could have told me, couldn't you? See, look, this is all we do. It's amazing, isn't it? It's like fantastic. And what I forgot to mention, because I got a little bit carried away, because I get a bit excited when I'm crochet knitting, is always pull your yarn out enough so that you're not compromising the tension. Because if you try and knit and do this, yeah. you're going to get really tight stitches. And okay. the same with crochet. You want to keep a real even. And you, all I was doing, I didn't even tell you how to hold the yarn. Because normally there's a certain way you just pick it up and do that. You don't need to with this. You can sit on this and bounce it. You can simply just hold it like that as your tension because it is so fat. You wouldn't be able to do that with a thinner yarn. Okay. I will give you a little, these should come with a warning. They have a mind of their own, Debbie. <laughs> they, they do have a mind of their own. There's going to be an awful lot of people going, oh, I didn't know you could straighten it on circular needles. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And these are brilliant. These are, these are I would say, one of the more top quality ones um, because you want a nice, smooth transition from yeah. the... What size are they? These are a nine. A nine, okay. A nine. Now, we have gone with a nine for the mm -hmm. knitting. Um, but again, it's up to you. You can do what you want, what size that you want to do. All that you're going to get is a, a more open weave. I think, if, oh, this, these are my knitting ones. So you have, this one is seven mil. This one is nine mil. And that one's 20. Oh, okay. So that one, <laughs> they're huge. Telegraph poles. I like big things. <laughs> I like I like working with big things because I'm I like to have it done. As soon as I start, I like to have it finished, which is really naughty because I should just savour it because I, I do absolutely love it. But you can get a different look. They're exactly the same. They're all garter stitch, and all garter stitch is you knit, 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 knit. Yeah. And if you knit one row and purl one row, that's stocking stitch. So they, they mean different things. But that all that is is garter stitch, so it's the same. And they make amazing scarves, wouldn't yeah, they? Yeah. How am I, I don't I I didn't weigh that. So I don't know how many scarfs, I could probably work out how many of those you'd need to make a scarf. And if I weighed that and times it by, I, you, I'd probably be able to tell you how many you can get. I'd have scarfs out of that. They would, so that's, that's, all, that's all my Christmas presents. So everyone knows what they're getting now, don't they, Debbie? <laughs> but yeah, they, they should come with a warning because they do have a mind of their own. So they are a little bit hard to work with when you first start casting on. Once you've got um, much further, and you're going to ask me what the benefits of these are, aren't you, Debbie? What are the benefits of well, those? Well, the ones? benefits of these are, it's the weight distribution. First of all, no matter how hard I tried, I could not get more than about 15 stitches on that. You need to get quite a lot more than that to get a, a blanket that size. Yeah. So this, you, they, it just goes along this bit here. So it just goes around here. And a lot of people have said that it, because it distributes, the weight more evenly, it's a little less on their shoulders. Oh, okay. You physically would not be able to knit one of these blankets on a normal pair of needles because you, they would just be popping off all the time. Yeah. You, you only allowed, even if you had, well, you'd probably have to have needles that long. <laughs> I've seen it, I have seen a lady using needles that long. Um, but these ones are amazing because you can, you can just knit with them. All we're going to do, we're going to do exactly the same. I'm just going to create that slip knot. And then I'm going to put it over both needles 
and gonna pull it. Don't pull it. Can we move to the left of it? Don't pull it too tight. <laughs> Don't pull it too tight. Um, because the tighter you knit, the harder it's going to be for you. So just keep a nice loose tension, especially if you're just learning. And I say this does have a little mind of its own. But all we're going to do now is we're going to cast on. Now, there's no right way or there's no wrong way to cast on. There's your way. Everyone does it different. This just happens to be the way that my mum taught me all those years ago. Um, and it's the way that I've always done it because it gives me a lovely even edge. But I do know there is a way you can do it with a thumb method. And all we're going to do is we're going to take our working yarn. It's exactly the same. The bit that's attached to the wall, the ball, is the working yarn. And we're going to put it around the right-hand side needle. And I'm just going to hold it with a little bit of tension. Don't pull it really tight because that's going to give you really tight stitches. I'm just holding it. And then I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to twist it round and then hook it back on that. So I'm going to do that again for you because it is quite confusing when you start, but once you do it and you have a pair of needles that behave, I can't really ask for anything more, me being me. Being me. <laughs> it's bound to happen, isn't it? So we put our, our yarn or wool over the right-hand side needle. We pull that needle back and then it pops over the top and it pulls that loop up because that loop, then we'll twist it round and we'll put it over the left hand needle and we've created a stitch. As I say, there are different ways of doing it, Debbie, but that's the way that I was always taught. Because now some people just actually go through there to create my next stitch, and there will be a lot of ladies and gentlemen that do this, I go in between the two stitches for my next one. It gives a really nice finish to the bottom of your work. Then we're gonna do exactly the same. So you're knitting right-handed as well? Is that knitting right-handed? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I think so, aren't you? Because you've got your, your yarn in, in your right hand. That may be why it took me, it was quite hard to learn crochet. <laughs> it took me ages to have my eureka moment. I, I danced around the room when I did. <laughs> I, I think I do. And, and it was only because um, there was no left handers in, in, in my day, Debbie. Um, so all we're going to do is we're going to put the wool yarn over that right hand needle. We're going to hold it stop it slipping off and then we pull that right hand needle back and up over pull the loop and twist it round onto that left hook and that's it that's okay. that's now got our three stitches so we start with three stitches and we need to knit a row and to knit it's called garter stitch when you do every row knit it's called garter stitch we're just going to place the right needle we're going to take that first stitch on the left hand needle and go from back to front and at the same time we're placing that right needle under left. We take our working yarn and this time we come underneath and over and up. Again I'm going to hold on to it because I don't want it going anywhere and I pull that right needle back. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> pull that right needle back but this time instead of creating a new stitch I'm just going to take it off the left needle. I don't want you, you don't want to be having your needles right down here when you're doing stitches because then you're going to do it and go pfft, and they're all going to pop off. But again, you don't want to have it so close to the end that it pops off anyway. So you'll, you'll find your way. Just have it a little bit further down and we're going to do that exactly the same. So we insert the right needle from the back of the left stitch to the front, yarn under and over, hold on to that needle then we're going to pull that right needle back and put it over the left and then we're going to push it off. So that's two stitches completed. And then we're just going to do the final one. So we insert from back to front, yarn over, pull that back, pull the needle up and over the left and take it off. So that's our first knit row. Now, Debbie, I need you to pay attention for this next bit, please, because it's very, 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 very important that you do. Right. All right. Please, thank you very much. So it's exactly the same as the crochet. We're going to do it from corner to corner. So we're going to increase each row and then it will start doing that. Are you watching? I'm watching. Okay. So I will go through just so it, it, it's not, um, that, sorry, that's the, oh, that's the knitting one. That looks, oh, because I've done my crochet in that. So they've done their knitting in that. So all it says, 
Again, oh, it says here, exact gauge is not essential for this project because it's not going to fit anything. Um, right, no, that's... Oh, yeah, they're still calling it yarn over the same as I am. So cast on three stitches and knit a row, which is what I've done. So the next one is we're going to knit two stitches. So knit as we did before. So back to front, yarn over, pull the right needle back and over the left and take it off the left. And the next one, back to front, yarn over, pull that needle back up and over the left and off. Yarn over. Are you watching? I'm watching. That was my increase, Debbie. That was oh, it. Okay. So that's it. So the increase for this one is yarn over. Right. Now it's not what you would normally do for an increase, but again, if we can see on the back here, um, Kat, by doing it this way, it's given us the holes at the edge. Oh, I that's see. how you get your holes. Okay. Now you wouldn't normally, if you would, if you didn't want the holes, you would you would increase in a completely different way. And this is why this is fantastic for beginners because that is it. That's how you do your increase stitch. So all we do, and I'll show that again, because I did go a little bit fast because I was teasing Debbie. So I'm going to just put my yarn over, and that's my I'll do it again. My yarn over, and that's my increase stitch. Now I'm going to do the next one. I'm going to just do a normal stitch, and that is my row complete. That's it. And last row I had three, and now I have four. And we start again. And you always, if you're working straight on a circular, you always want to have the working yarn you coming off of that left hook and you insert into that. You don't want to be doing it the other way round, otherwise you're going to go round in the round, because that's what these are originally for, to be working in a round. So you could work okay. tubes and, and jumpers and things. So we want our yarn and um, our working on the left. So we insert, yarn over, pull the right back, up and over the left, pull off. Now you will see that the next one is the loop. So it's going to be naturally bigger than the rest but you still treat it just like a stitch. So you go from the back to the front, yarn over and off. And then we just, so we've done that. Um, so we've done our first two stitches. So now we're going to do our increase stitch. And then we knit the next two. So we've now turned four stitches into five. How easy is that? So That's you increase so easy, stitches in the middle? I al you always do, and it says here, you always do two. So if, you, if I do my next row, so I've now got five. So I knit the first two. And then I do my increase, which is my yarn over. And then I knit to the end. And you will always find, as you get um, more and more stitches on, you will always find that the third stitch from the end will be your previous increase. Right. So again, I'm going to knit two, and then I yarn over because I want to increase, and then I'm going to knit to the end. But that's my third stitch. So you can see it's my previous loop, and that will always be there. So you know you're on the right track. If your third loop from the end is a bit baggy, then that was your, you know you've increased. Because sometimes, and I'm not gonna lie, Debbie, I've forgotten to do it. I've got so carried away because I, I don't have to look to knit, I can just knit. So sometimes I've been so engrossed in something and then thought, oh, it's gone a bit lopsided. <laughs> um, so you always increase on that third stitch. You knit two and then increase and then knit to the end. Knit okay. two, increase, knit to the end and that's it. So that means that your third stitch on the way back is always going to be your increase. And eventually you can see that it's not really behaving very well, my my needle as you get more and more on it will span the whole width of this it, you'll you'll have it but then what will happen it will fall into your lap evenly whereas if you had it on one needle you'd be like, like <laughs> <crushing>, <laughs> yeah, knitting like that whereas this way it's nice and even and the weight's distributed so anyone that's never used circular needles to do straight knitting why it's just brilliant yeah. i just love it and it gives you that opportunity to be able to make things huge 
So, um, how are we, are we okay for time? Can we do a little yeah. bit of decreasing? We, we've got, um, oh, we've got five minutes. That's going quickly, isn't it? Um, it has some lovely messages. Margaret uses a thumb. Uh, oh, yes, a lot of people on. use the thumb method. Uh, Linda's teaching two of her granddaughters to knit. Oh. Um, Shirley's watching. Sally says, Wendy Orlando, <laughs> you are doing a fab job. Oh. That's how we get lots of new knitters and crocheters. Oh, please do. It's um, wonderful. Leslie casts on with a thumb. Linda says, it's nice to see these crafts being promoted on TV. Mm. Oh, it's lovely to read your messages. Oh, that is so lovely. Mm. Right. Um, Lisa says she loves using soaking needles as well. She They're brilliant. So she's brilliant. never going to go back to uh, regular ones. Absolutely, and I wouldn't now. For something, uh, you would physically not be able to knit a blanket on that length. No. And as I say, unless you had like two or three foot long needles, and then you wouldn't be able to take them on, on trains or yeah. any, would you? Because yeah. this is I very portable. I knitted a curtain once. It was a, a bright pink one. It was about that wide. I just thought it would be fun, so it was only a small window, to knit a curtain, then have a, a big uh, knitting needle as the curtain Oh, no, that hole. would be amazing. <laughs> so I had like a dog toy on one end of a piece wow. of dowel in the shop and the other. So you did a little fibby wibby to me. You can yeah. knit. I can. I don't enjoy it. Okay. Yet. To be honest. Yet. <laughs> right, so you know you said, oh, I've made you take them all off. Well, I've just put them all back on. It's oh, quite okay. easy. One, once you actually know, and you can, and can see here that that's what happens. They just start travelling down the um, plastic thing, tube oh, thing, okay. whatever it's called. Um, and because you've knitted on the big end, yes, this is really thin, but you can see they're massive loops because you have knitted on the big end. So don't worry about pulling them back over. Right, you'll okay. easily be able to do that. Now we've done exactly the same as we have with the crochet. We've done it as wide as we want, so now we want to come back in again. So we've done our cast on, we've done our increase section, and this is how small this is, because the increase section is the same for the knit, and it's just saying repeat row one until you've got 86 stitches on the needle, and that's it. Okay. So now the next one, we're going to do our decrease. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's exactly the same principle as the crochet. So the first one is a knit one. And then you can see here it's saying knit two together. So you're knitting two to decrease, but then you're yarning over to increase and then you're knitting two to decrease. And all that's doing is creating that hole for you. Okay. So you want the hole to be going all the way around. So we're just going to knit two together. Now that's really super easy in knitting is that it's exactly the same stitch as knitting, but instead of knitting the first one, you go behind the second one and pick them both up together. So I don't know if you picked that one. Oh, that was, yeah, that was quite easy to see. So we knit two together. So we go behind and go forward. And we still have our right needle under. Yarn under and over. I'm holding it just so it doesn't pop off. I'm pulling that right needle back. And it is a little bit more tricky with this wool um, because it's very thick. And you're trying to do two stitches this time. And then you just pull them off. And that's a decrease stitch, but that's as e that's as hard as it gets, Debbie. Okay. And then we increase, yarn over, and then we decrease again behind that second one. And if it says decrease three together, then you would just go behind the third one and pick three of them up. Okay. And then you go all the way to the end, just knitting. So the decrease is only ever done on one side. And although you're doing two stitches together twice, you are only losing one stitch each time because you're doing that yarn over to increase again. So, but this is how easy it is. And I, I am using tension on my right hand this time, um, but you don't have to. I could quite easily do this if you didn't want to do the tension because I know that's one of the biggest things to get is the tension. But with something this fat, yeah. you don't need to. And then you just keep doing that row again and again and again <laughs> until you get to three. I think it says you until you get to three and then I think you just, oh yes. So the last one is once you've got to three, you just put them all together and job done. And then you sew in your ends, which I forgot, which I forgot. Have we got time, Debbie? Oh, oh my oh, goodness, revolution. We have one minute. These, what? these. What's that, what's that? These, these are amazing. So they're like a dining needle, a wool dining needle with a really big fat end. So oh. you can stick, I've got, I haven't got an end. Oh yeah, so I've got, I found an end, it's all right. So you can put your end through because if you're anything like me, you're there about three hours trying to get your wool through the end of the needle. <laughs> it's amazing. Sorry, finish now. Okay. As you were, Debbie. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> when, when you're back again, do you know? Well, I'm not going to tell you because then you'll say I'm not working that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't make it a Sunday. Oh, well, <laughs> really? You're not working that day, are you? 
I don't know. I don't know. Well, no, you're I'm not now, are you? No, no you're not now. I'm not. Definitely <laughs> not. Um, but I, I should watch you. Um, now, all of the tools that Wendy's been using are available for you on the website. Um, Yarn Lane is going to be back again on Wednesday, and it's going to be a little bit of Christmas crochet then. Let's just give you a reminder of the three three little balls of yarn that Glynis is still giggling at the size of. Um, so this is the grey. Um, this has been the most popular today. In fact, over half of the stock of that one sold out. Or you can go for the white. Um, which is snow white, so soft, honestly, it's a really tight tail. And then finally here, you have Kat's favourite, which is the pink, and it's all variegated, so you've got a, a very different look there. And your patterns, of course, they're free. So you've got some instructions on the inside, or you can go to the, uh, the website. The details are on the packaging when you get these home. So thank you for all of your comments as well. Janice loves a circular needle as well. Um, problem is she's got a drawer full of straight needles. We need to think of some projects that you can oh, make with your old... I will. <laughs> I will. I'll be there. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking little fences and then borders around <gasps> the garden. Oops. Oh, okay. I don't know, fire lighters. <laughs> I, I use them for poking out corners. Yes, I use them for poking out corners. Although yeah, shouldn't. because they're quite sharp. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you shouldn't, unless they're really fat ones. <laughs> I'll think of something, don't you worry, Debbie. <laughs> That's your challenge. Yeah. Um, if you have been watching Sewing Street already and want to place an order with um, your lane now, we still only charge that one postage for the whole of the day. Um, and we've got the same login details on the website as well. So if you've only watched us for the very first time today, but you have watched Sewing Street before, um, we're, all, we're, we're all part of the same thing. It does, Leslie, look like a giant marshmallow, doesn't it? And it's probably, I've been sitting here for four hours, and it's probably a lot more comfortable than the stool that I'm sitting on as well. So I might just hang on to one of those. <laughs> now, I'm going to see you again on Sunday, uh, bright and early, on Sewing Street at 8 o'clock in the morning. And remember, Yarn Lane will be back on uh, Wednesday at 12 o'clock as well. But keep your comments coming through, because we do take notice of them. Be nice to have your company. Bye-bye.